Okay, for connectivity setup, uh, welcome to one of the most difficult things there is to do on a GE portable ultrasound machine. It's one of our top phone calls, so hopefully this will um, help walk you through because uh, once you get it done, it actually is extremely powerful, and that's how GE designed it. You're going to hit the config button to get to this screen, and I'm going to use the trackball here and use the set key to go to connectivity. Okay, so the first thing you see here is what's called the data flow and this data flow uh, has a lot of options that you can set up here so like this says uh, you have your local archive and now you can set up a remote hard drive DICOM work list a DICOM server DICOM print uh, CD DICOM CD DVD blah 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 all that what uh, I'm going to show you how to do here which is the most common thing is set up a DICOM server so we want to go down here and use trackball and click set on DICOM server. Now, um, in order to set that, we can first, uh, you know, check it off as default if this is the one we're going to do. Right now, we're just going to go to DICOM storage, click on this in the output section, and then click on properties. Okay, so now we are in our DICOM storage properties. Before we take any steps further, the first thing you have to have in order to do this is one information from your IT department. And that is to find out if your system, your Vivid Eye, you, is going to be required to use DHCP or a static IP address. They'll know what that means. Hopefully you're using DHCP and they can say you can just plug this in and it will get itself onto the network. And I have an Ethernet cable attached to the back of the machine. So if you are using DHCP, you just plug this into your network connection and it should automatically put this on your network but you must speak with your IT person about that. This does not have wireless, and you won't know really if it's on the network or not. The only way to check that is when I plugged it in. Back And then I'm going to hit the dot again, to jump to the next one, and I know my next one is also a zero. I'm going to hit dot, and then I know my server is one, two, five. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and hit the set button. And now I've got this on there. So I can click OK. So now I can select that right there and click that little thing. And hey, look, I got a smiley face. This does not mean I can transfer images yet. This basically is only saying, hey, uh, is the server over there? And the server said, yep, so you can smile now. It's all happy. You, you, this does not mean you can go now and, st and send images. You have to now give it a name for that server. You must have an AE title, and I know the AE title of that server. And this is the information you have to get from the radiologist, and it's the only person who can supply you for this information. So... Uh, you need to get that name, AE title, and port number in order to be able to send any images to that server. So, and if you type in this AE title incorrectly, it will not go across. You have to do everything exactly right. So I'm typing in mine, and that's exactly how it goes, and I know what my port number is. Okay, so don't use the default settings. If you just have default settings in there, it's not going to work. You have to get that information from your radiologist. Allow raw data? Probably not, so you probably want to uncheck that. Your max frame rate, uh, you can choose 25 or 30. Allow multi-frame. This will allow you to send cine loops. 
and then compression. It's pretty important that you uh, choose the JPEG compression uh, with the quality. You can go ahead and do 100%, but as you're storing images, this is going to be, um, it, it can really slow down over the network. But, you know, you can choose 100% from here, and the image quality between 95 and 100 is negligible. So this is going to make your network transfers a lot faster and they won't see um, any difference in the image on the other end. If you use no compression at all, your images will be huge and it will take a long time to transfer those images. So JPEG is what the standard is using for DICOM. Inside the DICOM, it, the, the image within that DICOM is a JPEG image. So don't be confused with exporting this. It's not going to export as a JPEG. It's going to export as a DICOM image but the compression it's using to shrink it to make it transfer faster is JPEG. DICOM SR is DICOM Structured Reports, so go ahead and check that if you're using Structured Reports and allow us our private data, so if you need any patient data removed, it will do that for you. Now I can click OK. And so now I've got this, and for your DICOM server, click on it, highlight it, and see what this check button does. And it should say it's OK but it's not going to because I haven't started up my server yet. So it's just going to sit there and wait. And then it said, server check one of one OK, the ping saying, OK, hey, I know the server was there. Um, and then the verify, like it was able to talk to the computer, but then on the verify step, it said zero of one. So it's saying, hey, you know what? I know the computer's there, but it wasn't taking any of my images, which means everything's set up fine over here because it's saying, hey, I want to know if I could send something is rejecting it on the other side. That could be a firewall, could be uh, your AE title or something of that sort. So you need to check that and also have them check the server log. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn that. In this situation, I had my server turned off on purpose. So now I've just turned the server back on, and now I'm going to hit check again, and boom. Ping is OK. Device check, one of one OK. I'm good to go. And now there's a check mark next to there, and now I know I can store images to that DICOM server. So hooray. Now, if you had some other issues, um, you know, for DICOM print, you can set up some things for the print button to automatically like this print button over on the right hand side of the screen which is down below here to the right of the freeze button you can assign this print button to do various things like uh, DICOM storage or store to a clipboard but you can do that and then click here for advanced and this is going to that same DICOM storage so right now my print button is my store button is, is stored to, is set to store to the hard drive where my print button is saying okay you know what I'm going to do, when you hit that print button, I'm going to do DICOM storage. It's not going to a DICOM printer. It's not going to a printer. It's not, it's not actually printing at all. It's saying, okay, what did you want to do? Well, in this data flow, I set up DICOM storage to go to a DICOM server. So if I hit this print button over here, it's going to go to my DICOM server. Some tools, this is for exporting, and I'm not going to cover that at all to like a USB stick, but it will show up, and this is where you can format it and export to that USB stick. Um, different formats and how it is going to show up, automatic patient ID, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. TCP IP. Typically, you shouldn't have to get to this page. Um, these settings, this is the settings that um, were given to uh, because I was able to use DHCP. This is the, these are the settings that my network gave this machine just by plugging it in. So that's all my information. If, if we saw the same thing down here when we clicked on 10.0 blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's all shown in here, and that's why it's grayed out. This remote archive setup is if you want to send uh, images to a network drive, like a network folder, and again, that's something more than what we would do. Now, if you have some issues, you can always go into the advanced settings here, and I don't recommend it, but if your IT person says, I can't figure out why uh, I can't get it online, you're, this is where you're going to go to advanced settings, and you're going to work on your local area connection here. And what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to hit the update menu key, and that's like your right-click key. So that's where you'll get to your properties, and then you'll click the set key. So if you just go over there, and you click set, it's just going to highlight. You need to hit the update menu, go down to properties, click set, and now you're getting into your 
IP address, TCP IP properties, and this is where you're going to select uh, the static IP and whatnot. So anyway, that covers all the connectivity for the GE Vivid Eye, and that concludes our training on the GE Vivid Eye. Thank you for watching.